Let's talk about uh, Nancy Pelosi, who's no longer going to be uh, <clears throat> seeking re-election for Democratic leadership. Looks like the GOP has gotten control of the House now. Yeah. Um, so this morning, she basically said that she was not going to be seeking uh, re-election. So let's go ahead and play a clip on that. My friends, no matter what title you all, my colleagues, have bestowed upon me, speaker, leader, whip, there is no greater official honor for me than to stand on this floor and to speak for the people of San Francisco. This I will continue to do as a member of the House, speaking for the people of San Francisco, serving the great state of California, and defending our Constitution. And with great confidence in our caucus, I will not seek re-election to Democratic leadership in the next Congress. For me, the hours come for a new generation to lead the Democratic caucus that I so deeply respect. And I'm grateful that so many are ready and willing to shoulder this awesome responsibility. Is it the end of an era? Uh, it's, an, it's the end of an error. I mean, I don't know. Well, let me ask you this question. When do you think is the last time she did anything related to her district? I, um, all right, I can answer that question. So my personal take on Nancy Pelosi is that she actually does do that. I think what we have to keep in mind is that her district is skewed to the very wealthy. I think the average median income there is 160 to 170,000 a year. Okay. So, so I think that she absolutely does represent that group, right? She's got six or seven billionaires that live in her district. So um, is is there tension there with the state of California? Yes. Is there tension there with progressives in the party? Absolutely. Um, is there tension with her actually governing towards the general consistency, consist, constituency outside of just being a wealthy person? Yeah, 100 percent. But I mean, that is part and part of the problem, right? Well, I, I, I think it's a huge part of the frickin problem. And I think Nancy Pelosi really represents I mean, not obviously she's not the only villain. There are many, but she is one of them who I, I think represents everything that is wrong with our politics. She has stood in the way of pretty much every progressive policy, especially within the past few years. And what has she really done? I mean, I, I take your point that it's like, well, she has a bunch of billionaires in her district, so she has their back. That's a fair point. But it's like, what does she do other than raise money? Like, that's all she does. That, you know, well, for like, the party, yeah, that's a big part of why they like her. Yeah, she's a huge uh, so money does. raiser. That's all she does, correct. You know, and she has her uh, yearly jot let out to Napa Valley where she invites um, people of power, uh, Democratic leadership, whatnot, and they come out there to her Napa Valley and they do a whole planning session um, and fundraising. Oh, so that is definitely part of it, too. Who knows what else they do? Who knows? <laughs> Drink wine? <laughs> at her estate uh, you know so i mean she is she is very much disconnected with your average american in my opinion so when she gets criticism from right wingers and it's sort of centered on this idea that she's only governing to the elite that she's tone deaf to the income inequality whatnot you have a moment where you're like yeah they're not wrong on that you know they're, they're absolutely right i mean <laughs> yeah like I, I think they're 110 percent right that's totally fair to say she would be considered a fringe right-wing politician in any other democratic experiment. The fact that she's considered an alternative to the right in the United States, that's like the only place where she'd be. I mean, she is against living wages. She is right. against universal health care. She is against, I mean, she mocks the very idea of doing anything about climate change. Um, good riddance. Uh, of course, she's like stepping down at a time where it's like they don't even have the house anyway. Um, I will, if I have to search for one decent thing to say, I will say I'm glad that she at least has the awareness to know that it's time for a, a new generation to step in. Uh, yeah. I'm sure she wants to see it. I'm sure she would rather see it be the uh, Pete Buttigieg, Joe Kennedy wing of the yeah. Democratic Party as opposed to the squad and stuff like that. But, you know, I mean, at least she's aware that it, it's time for her to step aside. But it'd be nice if she had that awareness a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it is a problem. So, you know, in California, we have a special blend of like, I'd say 50% of the Democratic Party here is this uh, this blend of uh, super progressive on social issues, 
but when it comes to money issues, they're very laissez fair, which is, you're right. So most other countries, this would, would be considered a right wing political position, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, mean, I flash back to that time when she said, we're capitalists, that's just the way it is. I mean, Nancy, that might be the case that we are, you know, capitalists in this country, but that doesn't mean that we let it go unfettered and unchecked. I mean, just bringing back some of the policies that FDR was a champion for would make a huge difference as far as correcting the rampant uh, income inequality. I mean, the fact of the matter is the the 1%, the platonomy in this country, has extracted so much wealth, and they're sitting on so much wealth, that if they stopped making money tomorrow, it wouldn't make a difference. It's, you know, it's they're just that filthy rich. Um, and meanwhile, half the country is suffering deeply. Um, so we're worse off now, the new Gilded Age, right? We're worse off now than we were in the 20s in this capacity. So yeah. I do think in one sense, it is the end of an era. Um, which direction this goes in now, I think depends, right? So on the left, on the Democratic Party, are they going to look to replace her with, like you said, somebody from the squad that's more progressive or from that you know, area of the party? Or are they going to go with somebody that's more... Uh, interested in fundraising for the party. So I think oh, they're, the danger... they're definitely going to go with the fundraiser. I yeah, mean, I was going to say the definitely... danger is that because they're addicted or, to the money. Well, or they'll go with like, if they think that somebody who is better in the court of public opinion, if they're convinced they'll play at the company way, you know, they might give them an olive branch. But, but that's the only way. And again, it's like they got to be convinced they'll play at the company way. So, I mean, yeah, I, I'm glad. I mean, of course, there's like a sense of relief that it's like she's stepping, you know, out of this position like that. That's good. And like she's needed to go for a long time. But yeah, who knows if that's not necessarily a guarantee it'll get better. Uh, so we'll see. And, and as far as, you know, I, I can't really <laughs> I don't really have anything positive to say as far as the send off goes, uh, you know. I won't see it at any of the, of the donor dinners. I never got an invite or it got lost in the mail. <laughs> so, uh, so I won't be seeing you there. Uh, whatever. And you know what? I want to also mention this. She really gets a huge pass for how little she did as far as doing anything to yeah. stop Trump. She did. I mean, the fact that like nobody I mean, people are still blaming Jill Stein voters <laughs> six years later and yeah. counting. Meanwhile, right. it's like you go back to 2020, you know, Trump had three. He ended up with three picks, three Supreme Court picks. Two of them could have easily been prevented, first of all. And this isn't Nancy Pelosi's fault. But if Obama actually would have demanded the pick that was right. right his. So that yeah. that takes out one. Then the other one. It was a couple months before the election. Donald Trump had been impeached. Nancy Pelosi, she could have put every stall bill that she could have thought of, just thrown it in there, just thrown yeah. it in there. You only had to wait out the clock a couple months. She could have threatened a government yeah. shutdown. She could have just rattled the court of public opinion and said, hey, this guy's impeached. We need to let the people decide because Mr. McConnell wanted the people right. to decide uh, when that was a year before the election here were just like yeah. two months she did nothing she did absolutely nothing and while they were doing the whole impeachment theatrical performance they were fast tracking all of trump's judges at lower levels yeah. that's so true it, a hundred it, of them at least that i'm aware of that's true. yeah literally yes yeah. And, and so she gets a pass for all that meanwhile she was the she was the leader of the quote resistance by the way, she signed all of, uh, you know, she she kind of was on board for extending the Patriot Act. She was on board with some of the biggest right. military budgets of all time. But, oh, one time she tore up a speech when the cameras are on. Ooh, leader of. about that. What <laughs> a speech. freaking joke. Oh and she God. still gets a pass for it. Yeah. It is it is mind boggling. You People will blame People who voted for Jill Stein, some of the some of the most powerless people in the freaking country, <laughs> like like people who just we, we lose an election as soon as we walk into the voting booth, you know, like, like being a leftist in the United States, you just lose right. constantly. In fact, I, I'll, I'll mention this as an aside. Kenneth Mejia, who just won city controller in yeah. Los Angeles, for me personally, that is literally the first time in my life where somebody I supported from the beginning, i.e. the primary, has won an election that I was able to vote for. 
the first time in my freaking life ever. And it's yeah. for a local position for City Controller. I'm hoping it's not the last, and I'm hoping it's the start of a new tomorrow. 